So you may ponder, what is energy? Energy is necessary for change. It drives every process we can imagine, every life process. And we can imagine that the struggle to obtain energy for these processes underpins every aspect of life on Earth and elsewhere. For instance, plants, they try to grow above the other plants so that they can get the energy from the sun to build their bodies. The plants that are shaded out often die. Animals eat those plants to obtain this energy. Other animals kill different animals so they can eat their bodies to obtain the energy for life. In society, we wage wars to obtain the energy that we want for our vital, national, personal activities. And so, let's take a look. Let's take a look at this very important thing, energy. It's conserved. You can't make it and you can't destroy it. But you can change its form. And the conversion of energy is what drives these processes. For instance, I mentioned before, you have a rock on the bottom of a cliff and you lift it up and put it on the top. Now, the rock is still a rock, but it's in a different state. And it required energy, it required work to give it this potential energy, the symbol is you, that it has up here. And we'll learn that potential energy is mass times gravity times the height that I move that rock. And then I can let that rock fall. And this potential energy will be lost, but that potential energy will change to kinetic energy right before it hits. It's moving very fast, and that kinetic energy is one half mv squared, the mass times the square of the velocity. This is only part of the conversion. Where did this energy come from, this potential energy to begin with, and where did this kinetic energy go? What we have is through gravity, the potential energy changes to kinetic energy, as indicated by its velocity. The conversion force is gravity that makes that change. So where did that kinetic energy go? Well, the rock has a lot of kinetic energy. It does work by deforming the ground and maybe itself and it's turned into heat through the collision and friction of the, of the collision. So this is changed to heat energy, which we can write out heat, often symbolized with a Q. And you'll note that if you ever hit anything, if you ever hit anything, for instance, you beat a nail with a hammer, or you saw something with a saw, you'll note it gets very hot, and that's the change of kinetic energy to heat through a collision, through friction, and we can write that F, the F word, friction. Okay, so where does that go? Where does that heat go? That has to dissipate um, out into space, ultimately. <clears throat> ultimately, these processes that heat the Earth allow the Earth to cool by radiating this heat out into space. So I can write infrared radiation, Okay, and I can draw my Earth here, radiating this heat out into space. Where did this energy come from? Well, the potential energy was provided by my work. Okay, so I can put down work here, the force of my hands pushing it. Like, so you might say force. Oh, that's a drag, because it's also F. Alright, we got a problem here, but we'll deal with it later. <clears throat> so, where did that energy come from? So it was my muscles that did the work, but the energy came from ATP in my body, this, this chemical potential energy. So this is a kind of potential energy. This is gravitational potential energy at the top of the cliff. This is chemical potential energy that's stored like in gunpowder and gasoline in the food we eat. So we'll write down this is... Um, potential energy chemical as opposed to potential energy gravity. Where did that ATP come from? Well, that came from the glucose or the protein in the food that I ate. So, this is food. 
And this mecha mechanism would be digestion, right? So now I'm running out of room, digestion. And where did that food come from? Ah, it grew. It could have been an animal that ate another animal that ate ultimately plants. But ultimately, it had to be a plant. And so we have plants that got their energy from the sun. The sun is very important as the primary source of most of the energy on our planet. Okay, so the sun's, the sun's radiant energy, so we can write radiant energy, is converted to chemical potential energy in plants, in food, through photosynthesis. So I can write photosynthesis here. Okay, and so we have a conversion where the radiation comes from the sun. It's a very hot sun radiating to the earth in largely visible light. The earth doesn't heat up because the earth radiates. It's infrared, mostly in the infrared, away into space. Now there's this global climate change thing people are talking about. What if you have more carbon dioxide? that doesn't really absorb this radiation, this visible, but it preferentially absorbs infrared. It's like putting a little down coat on the earth that prevents it from cooling off through this infrared radiation, and so its temperature goes up. Now, when the temperature goes up, the infrared radiation increases, and we reach equilibrium again, but at a hotter temperature. So we want to think about these energy flow diagrams for some other process, potentially maybe for driving your car, for riding a bike using an electric tool. And what you'll find is almost always they start with the sun, from the heat of the sun that radiates, and they finish with our radiation out into space. Be prepared to do some energy conversion diagrams from the beginning to the end for tomorrow in class.